safe in that little room there. You can see a white panel there. That's a huge satellite dish that helps get the picture to you guys, I think. The one lioness is sitting there, the other one's drinking here. It's all happening here. Interesting behavior with you guys and those lioness back with Jamie and all of the growling that's been going on there. So, action packed. Even this lion is chasing these hardy to ibis. Yeah, the Cape bu Buffalo are not too sure what to do now. They're kind of standing around wondering what their next move should be. And Mimi who's just 15 years old, is interested to know if the lions need to drink or if they can get water simply from their kills, as she was under the impression that they could get enough liquid simply from their kills. And Mimi, in areas where water is very scarce, yes, the lion there may be able to make do with just the water, or the liquid rather, and moisture from their kills. But all other lion that I've seen, in regular areas where they do have water, they do need to drink almost daily. Or well, they like to drink daily. They maybe don't need to, but they like to. So only very specialized lions in desert areas will be able to go for days without water and only rely on their food. But it's more common that lion actually do like drinking. There come the buffalo. This is awesome. There goes the hardy dog ibis, the ripple effect of the buffalo chasing the lion, the lion chasing the hardy dar. I can't see where the other lioness has gone. I think she is still up and around FC. Oh, yeah, I've just spotted her again. So she looks like she's making her way back down here. But the buffalo haven't given up yet. And even though I thought they would have, look at the ox pick, a little bird sitting on the buffalo's back as it chases the lion away, as if nothing's happening, just there for the ride, there for moral support. The other one's got a whole bunch of ox peckers spectating. And here goes the lioness. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. Beautiful sunlight cast onto her now. I think she may be able to sneak around the back of our vehicle and maybe try and have another drink. You may see one or two of the other vehicles in shop also enjoying this wonderful sighting with us. And yeah, I think the lioness is going to be able to have another drink from this little puddle next to us. But probably not for too long because the buffalo are regrouping and planning their next attack. And the lioness is not taking any chance. And then Andrew, maybe you can go back to the lioness who's coming back down into the clearing beyond these lions. Difficult to know where to form. Look at how awesome these shots are. Here comes the other lioness. And the one that disappeared behind our vehicle is looks like she's going to lie down in the shade, so she's at least managed to quench her thir thirst. The other one, who gave up, has yet to. So that's the one we can see returning now. And the buffalo are probably going to get quite a big surprise when they see her returning. Oh, it looks like one of them may have spotted her. Well, it's not often we get to show you views like this in a nice open clearing, lion and buffalo pacing around one another. We have been absolutely spoiled rotten this afternoon. I'm not sure if you can hear the squirrels chattering away frantically. Quite a way off and it's quite windy so you may not be picking up that audio but the squirrels have been shouting non-stop since these lions arrived around the water hole. And sadly I think there's just too much ambient noise being picked up by the wind or caused by the wind. 
good. Wow. Look at that. You need to reposition and see what these lions are doing. I fear, feel like they are going to probably be sleeping in the shade for the time being. So you guys are going to jump back onto Jamie's vehicle and see what's happening over there. Moving from a situation where the buffalo were victorious to a situation where they sadly were not, the females have taken the opportunity to come and feed while Amber Eyes and the other female have gone to try and get a drink. There was a bit of growling, puffing and puffing a bit earlier as they all tried to squeeze around the best part of the kill, but they found their designated sides now and all is calm again. They've flipped the calf over completely now, but earlier we had a view of the trachea descending through the thoracic cavity. And Charlie, you were fascinated by that. And what you noted was how enormous it is. And you were wondering if that's because of the large buffalo lung capacity. And yes, essentially that is. I mean, there are big animals, even at the sub-adult size, it would have been a couple of hundred kilograms. So to have plenty of oxygen or the capacity to bring oxygen into the large lungs is an essential aspect of being able to keep the buffalo going when they need to run away from a hunt like the one that happened this morning. Now, interestingly, buffalo are one of the animals that suffer the most from tuberculosis or are most common carriers of tuberculosis. But because of their large, resilient lungs and their large body size, as well as the fact that it's a naturally occurring disease, you actually find that whilst most of them carry it, very few of them are seriously affected by it until they reach the older ages and they start to weaken their, and their immune system starts to weaken. But trachias are always fascinating things, reinforced by cartilage rings all the way through. Not collapsible like the esophagus that would have been pulled out at some point at the start of this kill. And of course the stomach contents avoided completely, but the lungs with their complete their pleural membranes and all of that blood supply around them to allow for the gaseous exchange they are incredibly nutrient rich and at the start of the kill it would have been absolute chaos watching them trying to fight their way for the lungs or the livers or not the livers they only have one liver sorry liver or kidneys all of the most nutritious parts of the carcass Bunch around, Scott is still with his lines and they're on the move. So the line is well, still battling it out with these Cape Buffalo and there's a tiny little overflow that the one lioness is trying to drink out of. It's probably not the taste is of what's in very muddy i'm guessing but better than nothing and that's all they can get while these buffalo keep them at bay from the water's edge and isn't this just fascinating to witness two eternal en en enemies meters away from one another the lions actually killed a buffalo this morning, so that we can't forget. And now the, the very same species is preventing the lion from washing down the thirst caused by feeding on one of their own. So Texas 
And you're wondering whether or not we can distinguish between lions by looking at their whisker spots, just like you do with leopards. And you can, but it's not nearly as easy. The leopards have got far more distinctive and characteristic markings as opposed to the lion. I'm just going to try and reposition the vehicle quickly. This is a great opportunity to try and get some VR footage with the 360 degree camera. So let's wait right here. We are quite close, but that's necessary. I need to just let off a little clap, and that should work. So now we have these Cape Buffalo all around the lion. There's two lioness to our right, all the buffalo straight ahead, and one quite close by nearby now i am narrating for the vr rig so andrew you don't have to try and keep up with me otherwise you're gonna have your work cut out here come the buffalo on the right chasing the line straight past us and wasn't that incredible dust kicked up by the line and the buffalo continued to stand their ground at the water's edge too good that's gonna make for a good video so i'm glad we got that rig on in time the hardy the ibis calling in the background the lions have as you can see relaxed behind us now to the right Whew. and how long will this backwards and forwards continue for only time will tell but what i can assure you is that we are not going to be going anywhere so you are though you're going to be going to jamie quickly but as soon as things heat up here again we'll call you back and what incredible dynamics we have had the opportunity to witness in this or on the sunset safari um, i'm still making sure they get the most out of the looks like they're targeting the pelvis and the leg joints. Awesome to witness. And the sound effects are also adding to the intensity of a sighting like this. The crunching of the bones. Just have a look at those teeth slicing around the bone before she stops to lick and have a look at it again crunch around and although they don't have the same crushing power that hyenas do they are able to consume small bones quite easily and often chew around and ingest some of the bones around the edges <clears throat> and that also adds to their calcium intake and quite often with lion scat just like hyena scat it actually starts to turn white in places where they've consumed a lot of the carcass. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on your perspective, a small buffalo like this is not going to keep them very full for very long. So a large dugger boy could keep them well fed for four days. As they consume as much as possible Keith you were wondering how much of the kill they will consume before they abandon it and they will consume as much as they can they're not quite as efficient as hyenas at getting the most out of the kill but they will pretty much finish all of the meat that they can get to or all of the muscles they'll leave the skin and the bones for the scavenging vultures and hyenas and Keith it's just a matter of the circumstances because if the clan unites this tonight and descends in large numbers, we know that there's at least at least 10 or 15 adult hyenas in this area, and there could well be more, for all we know. We only really get to see the individuals around the den sites. If they call to each other and unify, it could be that the lions are kicked off this buffalo kill before they've finished every part of it. I think what we can guarantee is that by tomorrow morning, these lions will be on the move again.
and Raid Freak, who is watching on YouTube. We were just commenting on the bite force of these lions. And it is incredible watching the power of their jaw, those huge cheek muscles and the muscles around the top of the skull. And having seen lion skulls before, you can see all of the ridges and the grooves where those tendons attach and help to unify the entire structure. And it just is such a powerful reminder of what incredible predators they are. And such opportunists as well to go walking forwards to stalk that water buck, even though they have a buffalo already down and partially consumed and very full bellies. Don't forget, for those of you watching, and especially for those of you joining us for the first time on YouTube, this is coming to you live. So it's happening as you're watching it. We're getting your questions through as you ask them and we are responding them to teach you more about what it is that you're seeing. And the joy, of course, about the fact that it is live is that we never know, and you never know, what's going to happen next. It could always come as a surprise, and it has, the last few days, have provided us with some of the most amazing moments that I have ever had since I started doing these live safaris. With wild dogs running through into a hyena den, leopards surprising us by popping out of bushes. Deja, who's watching in Florida, you were wondering if the hyenas do decide to come here, if they come and join this particular kill and try and steal it away from the lionesses, you were wondering if they will run that lionesses off it. And as I said, it depends on the numbers. Two or three hyena are not going to be able to make an impact, although they might be able to steal a bit of the leg or something similar if they are courageous enough to risk it. But if more than that starts to join, if we're looking at numbers of 10 to 15, then we start to really have a distinct possibility that we're going to see some incredible interpredator conflict. Now, without a male here, they do not have as much of a defense system as the rest. Speaking of defense systems and conflict with other animals, it seems as though Scots lions have finally made it to some water. Well, the one lioness on the left of the screen here is quenching her thirst and the buffalo appear that. They have now come to terms with the fact that these thirsty lions are going to keep persisting until they get lucky. And I can't tell if this is the one that didn't get a drink earlier on. I'm guessing it is because she's trying that much harder. There's the buffalo chewing the cud. And Tatiana, a new viewer, great to have you with us. You'd like to know if there's times of the day where it's more likely to see good action. And yes, most certainly, the early mornings and late evenings are the best times to be out on safari. It does vary though, and sometimes the middle of the day can be good if you had a water hole, for example, because that's when the animals come down to quench their thirst. But there are very many variables out here, and as you can see right now, there's some animals quenching their thirst. The other lioness is just off to, to our right. That looks like she's just got a thorn in her foot that she's busy trying to pluck out. And Barbara has also mentioned that it is quite strange that these full-bellied lions are active during the heat of the day. Here comes the other lioness behind us to the right. And... There's some other people also enjoying the sighting with us, and she's going to join the lioness that's drinking. Now, this may cause the buffalo to react, but let's wait and see if the two of them here don't incite a little bit more aggression from these Cape buffalo. Thanks for sending through your questions, Tatiana and Barbara, your observation. And it is interesting that these lions have been so active on this hot day. But I guess that's 
directly linked to the heat, causing them to be that much more thirsty and that much more willing to move and try and quench their thirst. Crystal Freeze, you would like to know where Peter, the hippo, who used to frequent this pond almost daily is, and we are not too sure where he's disappeared to, you may have found a bigger pond elsewhere, filled with some lady hippos to keep him entertained, but we aren't sure, what I am guessing is that the um, hippo that died tortured to the east of us is not the same hippo that was here. The timing wasn't right. That hippo died, I think, while we were still viewing Peter, if I remember correctly. So I think he is still alive, but we can't be certain of where he has gone, sadly. Well, these lions are really getting comfortable now, and who would have thought they are just so close to these buffalo, and everyone seems to have come to terms the proximity they are to one another. Nice of you guys to get a slightly different view from the Juma Waterhole cam. And now Andrew's going to show you exactly where it is in relation to us. And whoever the zoomy is today, or during this period of action, you are seriously lucky and well deserved because you guys do spend hours daily hoping for action like this to unfold so i'm glad that it is finally happening right here at the water hole that has not seen lion for quite some time hard to believe that another buffalo is getting comfortable enough to actually consider having one last wallow in the cool mud And the lioness, you can understand by the amount of time that they've been drinking for now, seriously needed this little thirst quencher. Kevin and apologies that you missed the action as did all of us really and not even Jamie or Nikki or Kirsty who were closer than anyone to these lions while they were chasing the buffalo actually got to see the takedown and trust me if I had any inclination that these lioness were going to bring down a buffalo we would have extended the drive and Jamie and I felt strongly that it was a stalemate. And I guess that's just a lesson learned. You can never tell what's going on here. But trust me, if we knew that it was gonna happen, we would have stayed. We, we had no idea that this was gonna be the case. And it was just Nikki, the director actually, who asked Jamie to take her and Kirsty out after being stuck in the control room the whole day. And I'm glad they did go out and catch the back end of some action. But please don't feel like we avoided this action purposefully because that is certainly not the case. Hello to Chantal, who would now like to know my thoughts of what would happen if Peter 
the hippo was here. There go the lion now, finally. Straight past yours and his guests, so I'm glad they're getting some good views. Sadly, our vehicle's probably in the way of yours's pictures. Um, but that was great. Um, what would happen if the hippo was in the waterhole? I think it would probably chase the lions off a little bit more venomously than these buffalo uh, have relaxed to the degree that they have now. So I think, yes, the, the hippo would have been less tolerant of the lions. But again, my predictions are often wrong, as they were this morning, predicting that the lions were going to do nothing. And that's why a lot of these hypothetical questions that everybody wants to know the answers to, understandably, but nobody does know the answer to them because each situation will vary and you can put a hundred of the same different scenarios together with lion versus buffalo and you're going to get different results each and every time sometimes the lion will win sometimes the buffalo will win and you know it varies greatly so even the same species versus the same species will result in different results. So I'm just going to stop here. These two lioness are heading straight back towards the kill now. And it'll be interesting to see if they don't have a tag team with the other three that haven't been able to come for a drink. Because it would be very useful for some of the lions to remain at the kill to keep those vultures at bay, as well as to keep any scavenging hyena away. Okay, let's reposition and loop ahead. Kevin, happy to hear we're on the same page now and we will get lucky eventually. Um, like I said, we spend so much time, so much more time than you actually, with sleeping lions and sleeping leopards. You often get taken across to the other vehicle while we sit there scratching our heads. Um, so trust me, uh, me more than anyone wants to see action after investing many, many an hour of my life with sleeping cats. <laughs> Good. Well, we're going to try and get you some more good views of these two, but while we do, we're going to send you back to Jamie. Sorry guys, I'll be with you in one moment, just having a conversation on the Game Drive channel. Copy that, thanks very much. I know it does interrupt my signal ever so slightly, but just letting one of the Bufflesick landowners know that there are lions here on a buffalo kill. And she's just dragged it further into the bush. I'm going to reposition a little bit so we can get another view of her in this glorious afternoon light. And won't it be so interesting to see whether or not the lions do tag team and the rest of them have a chance to go and drink. I know that they're on their way back to us now. Hello, gorgeous. This light is incredible. Absolutely stunning. Look at those eyes in that gorgeous evening light. And apparently Scott has also got lions on the move in beautiful light as well. So let's have a look at them. So we're just waiting patiently for these ladies to get into a spot where we can loop ahead of them, but still enjoying these wonderful views following after them. Perfect afternoon sunlight and what's been an absolutely wonderful afternoon so far. And the beauty of it is, is that it's not over yet and there's still quite a long time left on safari. So who knows what will happen next?